And welcome back to Weekend Warriors X ESV League of Legends Online Tournament. This is your commentator for tonight, speaking Z, as well as commentator Coco and Kai. They are all here with me for this evening, and we have news to tell you before we hop on into this game. This is currently the first game between Phantasm and Extra Gaming. Yes, the title is. It'd be nice did... if you let us see the game too, just saying. Uh, my brain farted, but. Uh... <laughs> That is currently a fight. We will explain the situation after this thing is finally done over and it's seven internal. It's just gonna die and that is gonna be a knockup in towards a last breath for Yasuo. And Ryzen Hiroman doing Ryzen Hiroman things. That is a lot of damage. Ali is gonna die. 17 and 16 in favor for Phantasm. A big lead. Yasuo 7 and 0. And uh, Kai, would you like to explain the situation? Okay, so. The situation currently at hand is the fact that one of Sigma's players, uh, the area where he lives in, unfortunately, has experienced a blackout. Therefore, well, he is not able to play right now. Uh, with that in mind, we've spoken with the teams. We've spoken with both teams and... Oh? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I saw the fight. The fight. Oh, he's dead. But no, I, I, I spoke with the I spoke with the teams, and we have decided that should they still be available, not available, should the players um, be around by what was eleven? Something like that, yeah. Yep. Then we shall promptly begin their matches, which will go up a bit later than usual. Um, however, should their players not be able to, since it's we've agreed with Vamos on this matter we will be postponing their matches to tomorrow afternoon. Uh, those matches will be pre-recorded uh, and won't be live, but will be uploaded onto our YouTube channel, much like the other pre-recorded uh, um, stuff matches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And exactly. you guys will be expecting to see them play again later in this tomorrow evening. So whichever, whichever, whichever team makes it out alive out of that will, will not play, but the losing team will have to play tomorrow's uh, evening matches as well yeah so but yeah. right now back into this game we didn't see what happened in the beginning and whatnot but hey this is phantasm versus next year phantasm having a very sizable lead at 21 minutes 18 and 6 5k gold lead almost like about 6k from the looks of it and yo you look at the scoreboard that is the very fed yasuo olaf as well as an oriana that is scary Okay, no comments on that? Okay. Very scary indeed, <laughs> but if you would like us to comment on the game, it would do you very good if you would let us watch the game as well. Oh! Okay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am so sorry. I did not hear you, you in the first place, Coco. And, uh... Alright, so back into the game. We have a Baron fight going on right now. We have a good hook on the two. I'm still right there. It looks like they're going to go for a Baron skill, but it is not going to work. Hellfoot coming out from the set, it's not going to look too good, he can't cancel that right now. Painmaker going in, he's trying to just survive using the showstopper, trying to just buy a little bit more time. But look, there's already three people, very very low, that's going to be one or two exchange already in favor for on the other, the blue team right now. As we can see right now, Sivya is slowly running pale, trying to stay alive. Vayne, Busty Cluster over there, getting caught by the Oriana, and we have a very godlike one hit. And yeah, that's the first fight I see. I'm interested in this. So ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Let's go. We're gaming. And 21 and 7. A lot of stuff happened while we were gone. And from the looks of it, the Yasuo is fed. The Oriana is super fed. And as well as the Olaf. And right now, Hexpia has their hands tied. They need to do something in order to climb out of there. And the Vayne... As well as the Nami in the bot lane, they are O and both O and five, so ten deaths in the bot lane alone. So like, not really sure what happened there during that fight, but that looks like what oh shit, Air Soul for uh, Phantasm. That's four Drakes and the Baron buff, so they're pretty much you know good to go. Need to do well, as Coco would usually say, textbook League of Legends. You do the thing, you push lanes, you win the game, and you do the other thing. Yeah. Exactly. So could you remind us if this is a best of three or a best of one? 
This is semi-final, so it is going to be a best of three. So, you know, this is still match number one. We still have a long way to go. So, you know, it's still anyone's game and, uh, after this, you know. Right, Who knows, so it might be a reverse sweep. Oh yeah, so for the short match, we're going to see between Phantom and Mississippi. I think we're only going to see game one before we go in. Hopefully we get to see uh, Sigma versus uh, that one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, looking at the situation right now, and this is uh, what's causing Cynthia to not really have control of this game, from at least what we see from the scoreboard, it looks exactly like the same problems they had yesterday. They opted into a vein, bot, uh, vein ADC thing, and once again, their vein might have too much of a score, but it's a little bit too aggressive. And, and that is gonna be a oh, that is a lot of shutdown gold as well. Okay, and that is gonna be a dead or wait, or yeah, not get the kill from minions towards the Azir. Okay, I'm not sure what was happening there. It looks like a little bit of a miscalculation or something, but. Uh, hmm. uh, maybe she took a little bit too much tower aggro. You have to remember, she was tower diving as well. Anyway, yeah. as we can see here, um, Phantasm actually just slowly going for the mid inhibitor, just doing, you know, as I would say, textbook League of Legends at this point. You have the advantage, you have the Baron, you press it in with the Dragon's, uh, with, especially with the clouds, uh, Cloud Dragon Soul Ice. Um, with the ultimate, everyone's going to have a very good speed, movement speed boost. Going for the top lane now. Azir is coming up in three seconds, and here comes the teleport to just keep that cannon minion alive as treasure over there trying to get a quick hook onto an an overly zealous vein, I would say. Mm -hmm. And the vein have been seen down. playing a bit overly aggressive. Probably that's what the O and five cost it. And the thresh hook is not gonna land. Death sentence missing, but you know they just want to look for a pick right now, and Olaf is gonna get bubbled up. And Death Sentence is going to land on towards the set. The ultimate, the Oriana Ball is di directly over there. It looks like it's going to be a 3-man ultimate. No, that's going to be a 3-man last breath from Yasuo. And that is 2 kills for the Olaf and 1 kill for the Yasuo. Stretch is going to go down. But hey, from the looks of it, that was a beautiful ultimate. Beautiful engage from Phantasm. And it looks like it's going to be quick DD. We didn't get to see much of this gameplay this evening due to uh, some stuff happening. But hey... Phantasm might be the one breaking the curse here because in past tournaments it's always Xperia, Vamos and Sigma making the top 3 and from the looks of it Phantasm does have a winning chance they might want to just keep it and start playing towards that and break the curse or I would say how history has always played it out during these tournaments Closing thoughts Ladies and Closing gentlemen. thoughts. Uh, well, we didn't see too much of the game, but I will say the I do like the Yasuo. I like I do like a Yasuo bot lane. It's not something that's really con uh, not too conventional, I would say, and it's something that I actually despise playing with and against. Oi, let's, mm, but true. that being said, it is still a very good combo, especially with a Thresh in your uh, in your bot lane. You can set up for combos really easily. You do have the Oriana to set up with the Shockwave as well as an Orn with the um, ultimate there you can get a good knock up as we just saw in the last fight or getting a three-man knock up allowing yasuo to go for um a last a very painful last breath taking three people down almost immediately mm -hmm. and main carries yeah. did get picked up as well so like there so vain as well as the uh set and if i'm not mistaken i think it was either azir or nami all of them got held you know in their throats last breath and rip gg and i feel like it looked like a very funnel Yasuo type of team comp, you know? You want to say it's a very funnel Yasuo team comp, but if you look at Olaf's score, it was 11-1-2. Yeah, Olaf oh, is... From, from, what, from what the scores tell, I'm, I'm safely assuming that Olaf actually um, brought a lot of ganks to probably the mid lane and a lot of team fights. Just because from the score of Yasuo, you can see 8-1, which means that there's probably a few kills that... Um, yeah, Vayne and Nami just died just because they were caught somewhere. And the one thing about this Yasuo pick, though, it's a great counter pick into the into the Vayne and Nami, just because um, if you look on the side of Sifia, right, there's actually not too many skills to block, and a tidal wave from Nami is actually going to be completely stopped by a Yasuo windwall. And considering that there's not much things to block, he does he only really needs to save that windwall for Nami, and that probably disabled half of the 
composition of uh, half the team fight effectiveness from us if you i would say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I totally agree on that because, like, I was like tuning into the games like on my other screen and like, okay, Yasuo has been doing pretty good. We're trying to disable Nami's abilities from landing here and whatnot because, like, it looks like Nami is the only one with the CC as well as you know projectiles that can be blocked. So makes good sense on you know Yasuo to just save it up and just you know just wait. Essentially, probably got them the W as well trying to prevent them from CCing the Yasuo as well as the, uh, the rest of the team and mighty well played if I would like to see another game from this be it pre-recorded or not but hey we shall head on to uh, another break sorry it had to take a long time to wait but there are things you cannot do and you know be right back
Topsy Look is a traditional Filipino cuisine. It's also one of Rasacheria Cafe's signature dishes. It is prepared by using thin slices of meat and curing them with salt and spices as a preservation method. Now I usually prefer my Topsy Look's crispy, just like how Lola makes it back home. At first, we had an idea of creating retail space, but the idea evolved to something more value and character, which is evident inside and all around the box. And that's how the box was created. At the heart of the box is collaboration. We want to bring communities together through exciting events, which is great value for our tenants and for tourism industry as well. That's what it is all about here at The Box, connecting people in this vibrant ecosystem. Thriving together. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Weekend Warriors X ESV with the Legends Online Tournament. This is going to be game number three for Phantasm against XPR Gaming. Uh, Phantasm won the first one and XPR Gaming won the second one. And before anything, we'd like to apologize for delay in the stream. Unfortunately, our show showcase match for this evening, which was between Team Sigma I'm versus Vamos was unable to be streamed due to some technical difficulties on the player's side which was unfortunately out of their control and our control as well so here we are back again against Phantasm and XPR Gaming 1-1 on. for both of them and here we go I promise we see the set not not set Silas being banned out by Phantasm as well as Vladimir and from the looks of it XPR banning out the victor which is Ryzen Hiruma's number enemies. one uh, champion down in the mid lane, as well as the Olaf. One hits. Pocket picked. 
the one who wants to always go when it comes to jungling and the Orn is going to be the final ban for Exvia as well as the Senna for Phantasm and it looks like an Instalock Wukong very early on and tuned in here with you guys are our commentators for this evening commentator Kai and Coco how are you guys doing sorry for after the long wait of this evening what up, what up? <laughs> hello <laughs> I'm excited I'm excited yeah we still get paid for this right <laughs> <laughs> my paypal's in the description <laughs> And here we go. Sreza is gonna be locking in the Kled up in the top lane. He was playing Kled the match before this. I saw in the bots. Did manage to keep the opposing Urgot, you know, held in a leash. So, mm -hmm. you know, a pocket pick, someone he'd like to play. And 7 Eternal is gonna go in for the Zac once again. Okay. Yeah, let's okay. see what's gonna go on for these uh, champion picks right now. We missed the entire pick and ban phase of game two. Um, do, well, I'm, because this is game three, I'm assuming that Sifia won game two, right? Yes, they did. Yeah. All right, so this is basically do or die for both. And they do know that they do not want to deal with that legendary Olaf in the early game. They also know that that Orn was very instrumental. This makes sure that it takes away uh, by taking these two champions away, they know that they can disable uh, Preventer Yasuo yes, we'll picking the bot lane as well. As we're going to see right now, they might be thinking about picking maybe a... Uh, let's see, we have Urgot and Wukong. So we're going to see a very, very Bruiser heavy comp right now. It's probably going to be a set jungle. That means that's probably going to be a Wukong mid with an Urgot in the top lane. And looks over here, we're going to have an Aatrox who's going to come. Hey. Who, is, who are they uh, opting for a counter pick maybe? Aatrox mid not would be sure how high. strong the Aatrox picks may or may not be. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is gonna be an echo being locked in, and now second phase for the bands. Let's go. And I'm gonna skip definitely, yep. Yeah. And Oriana is gonna be banned. That was from the first game as well. Uh, Ryzen Hiruma's mid lane capabilities is a. Uh, very very strong now that echo has been locked in it's gonna be echo in the mid lane from the looks of it or you know either echo mid or the aatrox mid you know we're gonna go echo mid and just probably trying to deter ryzen hiruma a bit more he has shown that he's one of the more pro prevalent carries of the team Yep, and we're going to see the Heimerdinger yeah, being banned right there. A little bit of an annoying champ and Misfortune being banned as well. This is going to prevent that Wombo combo with uh, with the Cyclone and the Bullet Time right there. Yep, so man. far, we've seen uh, picks. We've seen bans. Uh, three bans is, um, that gave them a lot of problems uh, in game one. Misfortune over there synergizes pretty well with the set and the Wukong uh, ultimate with the cyclone over there that's pr probably a good ban over here we're gonna see a last ban gonna be the morgana which means that they are making sure that if they cast somebody they want them to not be able to escape with that black shield yep most definitely and the thing is i feel like it's gonna be a set in the bot lane more than anything but hey that is not the list being hovered in might be a confirmed pick three two one Nautilus support? Yep, there we go. You'd love to see it. And here we go. Phantasm, the final two picks for their team. You'd love to the see Nautilus it. The Nautilus support coming in over there for Team Sif. Yeah, All I'm going to say is I just hope that they're not going to opt for a Vayne Hyper Carry once again. It's not been working well for them too much. And especially with a very engaged heavy team oh. composition. Oh, like oh, oh. they have in Phantasm, I don't think Vayne is going to be a good idea anymore. Yep, and that is going to be another Yasuo pick from Teepsmore. This is what he picked in the first game. That's what made the, got the team the W. If it worked out before, oh man. And that is probably someone disconnected. And You can totally see... invite me to the lobby right now. <laughs> yes, sir. And yes, we'll be, yes uh, I can. Right back.
we are back. That was the surprise disconnect coming in from one of the players from Phantasm. Not pretty sure what happened. Sudden disconnect, but hey. Hope everything is back to normal. This looks like standard bands from before. Chat, if you saw something uh, sus, help us out. Thank you very much. And was it? Yep, that is the misfortune. So far, so good. One hit is. It was a Heimerdinger as well. Who's Heim? For the band. The, the bands. Oh yeah, the bands. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Cled and Seven Eternal is gonna pick up the Zack. Yep. Paru is gonna go for the set. Or Wukong. Set. Yep, it is gonna be a set in the support. Murantau is gonna go for the Wukong. Oh, or God in or the top lane. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, Minion Slayer is gonna pick Echo. Do I know what's happening in, fr in front of them? Who knows? Come on. Yep, that is an Olaf you. man. I promise. I'll be fuddling. Mm-hmm. So far, so good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thirteen seconds. Who they're trying to remember? Who their bands were? Yes, it was an yep. Ariana. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you remember? Cause I forgot. <laughs> yep, Morgana. Yep. So far, so good. Nautilus is gonna be get picked, and that is gonna be an Yasuo into a and rise. rise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh. Ziggy zigs. Okay. Okay. I see how it is. Very interesting uh, team here by Phantasm. Very AD heavy, with the exception of Rise. Very heavy in there. Very something heavy. I don't know what you just said. I forgot. Exactly, and I think that the one problem that's going to be prevalent for Sephia right away is that because we're going to see a lot of Bruiser champions from Phantasm, th that unless they can quickly prevent Phantasm from getting their tank items um, early in the game, they might have a problem in team fights towards the mid game because they don't really have someone who can shred down tanks except for the Kled. Whereas yep. if you look at the team of Phantasm, they do have that Rise who in a team fight can, you know, quickly shred a whole party yeah. down if you do not pay attention to that Rise. Mm -hmm. And against okay, Yasuo with set against a Ziggs Nautilus, Yasuo can still block out the damage coming in from the Ziggs. If you want, you know, because Yasuo yeah, Windwall is... Yeah, you know, say goodbye yeah. to your bombs, right? Uh-huh, and like the only other CC besides that in the bot lane at the very least is Nautilus's Ridge Line. And pro I think it blocks his uh, AoE stomp Cute. as well. Um, I don't think it does just because it's not a skill shot, but we'll find out, we'll find out about that in game. But mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it does it because it's not a projectile. But that being said, though, the difference between the Yas this current bot lane matchup, unlike the previous one, was that in game one they only had a vein went to even win wall against. Whereas at least in this game, there's an echo, uh, there's an echo cue to win wall against. There's a Nautilus hook. There is a uh, quite basically any skill from Ziggs. Yeah. Except his ultimate bombs away, is is uh is blockable by wind wall, which means that sometimes Yasuo might opt for that wind wall to block additional damage, and that gives them a better opportunity to engage. Because in game one they had Nami Vane, and essentially the only person that you really needed to make sure that you wind walled against was the Nami. Mm. Um, you could take a few hits from Vane. You you could dance around with the shield, and if you really needed to, you could then press a win wall. But then with Vayne being super mobile, you would dance around. But in this game, it's very different. With Ziggs, is not as mobile, which means that if Zig looks like he's going for an all-in, Yasuo can easily just uh, pop out that win wall and say, all right, you know what, we're not having any of this. Very, very true indeed. And the thing is... Um... As you said before, this rise is very, very strong. If, granted, even though earlier in the game against an Echo, he can, like, you know, not exactly. as strong. But Echo does have his ultimate. So, you know, if anything does go bad, he can just rewind time, go back to the ground, go back around, and, you know, still be alive. But yeah. that's just about it. Because, like, rise 
he doesn't really need to fight. He just needs to scale enough to get to late game and just, you know, dish out a lot of damage. So Exactly. And speaking about scaling, that's actually the team composition for Phantasm right now. Wukong effective at level 6, set mostly annoying starting level 6. Urgot with the execution at level 6. Yasuo best when he's level 6 and Ryze is basically a time bomb where he is wait he is going to farm for the Seraphs and possibly the Rod of Ages and they are going to look for a power spike at around this 22 minute mark mm -hmm. so basically for team Sifia if they want to bring this um, game home they want to make sure that they can secure the early game or else um, if, if left unchecked Urgot, Ryze and Wukong will give them a lot of problems later on and not just that, Ur yeah, Urgot especially, because like, he is a very, I would underrated in a sense that like, oh, it's fine, he's just farming, oh, it's fine, blah, blah, blah. And the second he gets super duper tanky, and it's just, it's just going to be very hard to deal with, especially later, later in the game, he will most definitely be at a, a very big threat in the sense that after like a good amount of time, his, I think his like E? will be dishing it'll be almost like on no cooldown so we can just spam that over and over and over and over again which is pretty busted and now we are back inside the rift this is phantasm versus xria this is game number three and hey we're finally live we are Welcome finally back, guys. live <laughs> boy and before we go on and continue of whatever is gonna happen next we are gonna do the roll call we have z on the blue side we have phantasm z Marantau as urgot in the top lane one hit as wukong in the jungle rise and hiruma as the rise in the mid lane chips more as yasuo ad carry sort of paru as set support and on the blue, blue, blue red side we have Xvia, XG Streza up in the top lane as Kled, Seven Eternal as Zack in the jungle, Minion Slayer as the Echo mid, Deer Six as Ziggs AD carry, and Crusher as Nautilus support. And so far, no cheesy stuff happening on earlier on in the game. Everyone's just playing it chill. You know, they don't want to have that early game advantage or disadvantage. You know, risk and reward. It'd be like that. And Wukong be started on the red side. Both teams, no, yeah, both teams, both junglers starting on the red side. So we might be seeing an early uh, gank towards the top or bot lane. All right, hold on. I'm just gonna get quickly get a time synchronization over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gotta make sure we don't cast five seconds ahead this time. It do be like that sometimes, huh? Exactly. Will there All right. Be oh. vertical jungling. Um, I'm I'm pretty. No, sure this is not. this is not vertical jungling yet. They are still they're still going for standard jungle roots. Um, I Wukong is going for that Krugs. I'm, I think I mentioned it before, and I still yeah. say I'm not a fan of Krugs. <laughs> Just mostly because if you are looking for an early game gank, you are not expect. Uh, Krugs is definitely going to leave you with a, a very little HP to gank. But that being said, we saw some good exchange uh, in the mid lane with the Urgot and the Rise right there. Sorry, well, I mean the Echo and the Rise right there. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, like the ward, never mind, that is going to be dredge line from the Nautilus level too early on in game. Chiefs more, very, very low HP, but the heal is going to go out. Not going to get the last kill. Survives another day, and yo, that's a lot of damage. They hit level 2 first, and whoo! Yeah, so we better back off. Make your music somewhere else. Oh no, he's not. Maybe he oh, yeah, so it's something you say, and this could be really, really risky, actually. Oh, and that is going to be the flash Rise going from for the Rise. Flash Ooh, not going to land. That is a return flash from the Echo. Ooh, that is just a lot of damage. The Nautilus showing who is the boss. He ain't going to push here. And, uh, yo. That's just a lot of dominance being asserted, especially with the Ziggs having long range control. As you said, this is a more late game oriented uh, team comp from Phantasm. 
Exactly, and look at um, look at how Sophia is playing right now. They're just playing so full, so controlled. As we have got a good gank onto mid lane over there. Rise already burned the flash. He doesn't really have much. The stun goes, and that's going to be an easy first blood going over to Sophia Gaming. Mm -hmm. That was a beautiful, well timed gank by the Zac too, knowing that. Okay, Ryze messed up his flash and he is somewhat overextending and you know level 3 Zach especially earlier on with the jump I would say it's just you know pretty scary especially knowing that you do not have flash or any other forms of escape as exactly you know, the Ryze. elastic slingshot from Zach is something that um, all, all players from Phantasm basically have to watch out for it, for people who play the game, you all you all know Zach has a really long engaged range, right? And that changes the way you play. You can't just play in the mid lane mark saying, "Okay, this is the mid, this is the middle mark. I'm safe." You have to remember Zach can gank from miles away. So by just overstepping a little bit, this is what happened, especially without a flash. Mm -hmm. And to answer our question whether or not Yasuo's windwall can block uh, Nautilus's AOE slow, no, it cannot. I told you it's not a skill shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are five minutes into the game. Bot lane is actually going really aggressive right now so far. But the problem is, Deer 6 is actually out of mana. So if Wukong decides to gank bot, this is going to be a very pristine opportunity. As you can see, he's already setting up. But I'm pretty sure that he's actually spotted by the wars. Yep, As the flash engage is already going in, it's set using the Haymaker to barely stay alive. Nautilus actually gets the hook on too. <laughs> Yasuo right there, but not getting the root. Oh, and Echo almost dying. He's just barely alive with the sliver health. Wukong flashes it, gets the kill onto him, and it's going to be a second kill onto the Nautilus right there, but not before he gets another person. That's going to be a lot of exchanges so far. Wukong chasing in, trying to get the Ziggs dead right now. It's it's all massacre, but Clut comes in to save the day and keeps them alive. Overall, that is, I believe, a 3 for one exchange. Yeah, and that in was In like, favor for Sifia. What, a five-man gank? Teleport and everything to the bot lane too, and granted the Urgot did not reply to Pledge teleport, so like, okay, maybe not, you know? But that was a very, very messy fight. I feel like Phantasm was forced to fight that, even though they don't have to. They could just back off, but you know, they wanted to re-engage. The set flashed back in with the Yasuo, knowing that okay, they're like, what, 25% HP, and I, I just feel like it's not cash money for them at that point. Yeah, exactly. They just pr probably they, they thought they could get the kill, but they didn't expect the teleport coming in from Kled over there. And, you know, that was just slightly unfortunate for Phantasm, I would say. But who knows? They might be able to still crawl this back. They are a scaling composition indeed. Ryze did get a kill. That is going to help his tier build early on. But we can see right now, Zach looks like he's preparing for a gank bot lane. Yep, and another one. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? Both bot laners, uh, you know, uh, use their flashes, use their summoner spells. So, like, okay, maybe not a good time for them to be over pushing. And right now, there's just a lot of lane control coming in from the bot laners of uh, Xia. And that is one hit getting zoned out of his own jungle. So, you know, that's gonna be more lost time, lost farm there for him. And just very, very unfortunate. He is still good. He's relatively healthy. And he's just trying to, yo, I want my red buff. She's trying to look for it. And Seth is trying to reinforce him. And they know that Zack is around the jungle. And okay, yep. Red buff secured safely. Nothing much to uh, be safe. He's safe. Exactly. And as Zack does know that Wukong is doing the red buff, he decided to opt for the um, dragon play right now. And Wukong has a feeling that he might be there and he's going to go for the dragon as we might have a skirmish at the dragon pit right now. Yep, they do see it. And Ziggs and Nautilus instantly rotated like, hey, okay, there might be something going on here. Y'all better help out. But if I'm not mistaken, dragon has already reset. No, it did not. And it looks like a free uncontested dragon for Rexphere. I mean, the Wukong did not have smite to begin with. So you know what? Okay, this might not work out. I'm gonna just... We might just have to leave it. Because, like, exactly. they're not even 6 yet, so... XPA does have the early game advantage in this team fight. Exactly, and not only to mention that, right, without the without the smite and the very quick rotations from Sifia, that was actually 
um, going to be the determining factor in saying, all right, we're not going to engage. We're going to wait for the next team fight oh, and it, available. It might Bot look like another looks like 3v3. there's going to be a good skirmish. Both jungles are getting ready. Yep, I think they're just waiting to hit level 6 at this point. Wukong is, is still waiting on the tri-bush there. And Wukong being really smart about this, not a destroying the tri-brush ward to give away his position. By allowing that ward to remain there, they actually didn't know whether uh, where Wukong was. But now Wukong has already backed and um, Zack might be backing too. Um, the gang not being too fruitful, it seems. Yep, not with... Oh, no, he is not going to go back. And that is Haru trying to get rid of the ward. But that's the thing, though. Nautilus is already level 6. He does not have flash. And that is Elastic... A uh, slingshot gonna land on towards the set and he is gonna die. That was just a little bit too greedy in my opinion. But granted, they did not know a Zack was still waiting inside of the brushes down in the bottom. That was a, just actually good bait by Bussy Crusher if you think about it. Mm -hmm. He, oh man, it looks like it's not gonna be over yet and there is no wind wall and that is the ultimate. And that, ooh, elastic slingshot is not gonna land and that is gonna be another kill for XP at 2 and 6 at 9 minutes in that is a very sizable 3.4k gold lead from XP early drake and a lot of and a good amount of kills earlier on phantasm can't really deal with it right now exactly right now the game seems to be that is a cheeky attempt to stop the recall from Ziggs right there, but it, the range is not being enough. So far, things are going well from Sifia, and for them to want to be able to win this game and go into the next round of the loser's bracket, they must make sure that they hold on to this advantage because and try and end the game before rise and uh, before rise can basically get a scaling because now that they've survived the early game, Yasuo is now level 6. The dynamic of bot lane has changed a little bit. Ziggs and um, Nautilus may have the all-in factor, but a but once a sorry Yasuo once um once once Yasuo steel tempest like cyclone gets you right, then you then you're stuck and then you take a lot of unnecessary damage while you're airborne. Oh, there we go. And this might be the unnecessary damage, but no, Ziggs is gonna use his bomb. So just jump out of there. And oh, but from the looks of it, that is gonna be a beautiful route by the rise, but will not be enough to hold them in place. Turret shots, if only the minions that had been earlier, Echo would have taken some damage out of that. But uh, why do I feel like the rise is losing a little bit? Echo is up ahead in CS by two, what, 20, 20, 20 CS above, and is rise is losing a lot of tower plates too. All right, just one thing I do want to highlight in case no one has noticed yet, which is um, this game, uh, Busty Crusher is actually playing support instead of playing AD carry, which we saw in the first game. And also uh, in, pre in game previous, actually, they do have a new AD carry mm -hmm. with them. So that probably explains the change in the, um, AD carry picks as we see Wukong oh, and- It is going to be another three-man drag, a three-man gank. Both teleports coming down right now. All teleports coming down. It's going to be a four-person dive onto bot lane right now. Yep, that is going, going to be five versus five. Going to get the first kill. Oh, the all right. Going to pick up Wukong at the back there, and he's looking for another kill onto That's... Yasuo. Though he's going to instead try and save <laughs> Zach, but that is not going to work as Urgot is going to pull them in, and that is going to be a team fight in favor for Fantasy. Yo, that was that suddenly became an ace, and that teleport from the Ziggs. It's not gonna be cash money. Everyone is right next to him. He wants to Ziggs run away. To burn the flash. And that is gonna be another flash from the set. And that is gonna be Z Marantau taking the kill. That Urgot teleported down. And see, this is the thing Urgot and the Rice. You don't take care of them earlier on. They're just gonna be very big later in the game. And that just goes to show that instantly. I feel like earlier on, the advantage was with Xperia. But once all the all the players from Phantasm landed, all the skill shots and whatnot, it just became a massacre for them.
And all of a Not sudden... Not only that, everyone was just huddled together in a very tight group, which is the best perfect scenario for a rise. If you were ever rise, that is the wet dream. Everyone stuck together. All you need to do, EQ, 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 EQ. And the whole enemy team is dead. And that's exactly what it did. Spell flux, overload, spell flux, overload. And you, we just saw what happened. And not to mention that the, um, I believe... What is that ultimate call? Is it Fear Beyond Death from Urgot just going in for as the, as the last nail in the coffin? Yep. That was just a very well executed um, combo from Team Phantasm. And now all of a sudden, the game just swung in Phantasm's favor. They they might still be behind in gold just because um, Sifia actually took a lot of turret platings. But that one team fight alone has, has, has pushed um, sorry, has pushed a Phantasm into oh, the lead that man, they and that is and gonna, gonna be gonna another kill. Yo, going golden. that is so early on to go gold, but yo, that's the thing. He does still have here beyond us. Just a couple auto attacks more, and Kled is gonna get eaten by the belly of the BC. He, he is now dead, and it leaves him another. He, he's gonna push it down top lane, most definitely. No first turret yet, so you know, if they get that, that's gonna be pretty much cash money. They see the Urgot pushing top lane, they see the Echo, I think. Or they have a feeling that Echo is somewhere there. And it Rotating might... towards top lane to defend that turret. Now, nothing coming up too much about it. Little poke there from the Yas. Well, this, this game just changed directions, honestly. Yep, and it's like... There was a big lead from XP, and that is going to be Paru trying with the Hextech Clash. Trying to go in for the debate. Going for the Nautilus first. Taking a lot of damage, but Dredge Line is not going to land. And also... The Hasagi not gonna land as well, and that is gonna be a dead set. And that they are really they want to go for the Yasuo. He is gonna miss the tornado, the cyclone, and that is Deer Six getting another kill on the bot lane. Yasuo, and you know what? That is just very good sidestep from Deer Six over there. If that was just an, uh, a combination of things going well and also things going wrong for Phantasm, because Phantasm played that as best as they could, but all the all the hurricanes just not hitting. Deer Six doing his very best to dodge all of them, and they're going to secure first turret with that exchange. Yep, that is very, very cash money for XPI. This is now, before, like just a couple of seconds ago, it was the gold lead was very even, like even Steven. And now they just boosted it up to like by what 2k, one point something. And that is going to be another gang from the Zach. No, 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 left six thing shots just going to back it off. Like, maybe not, not this time. All right, if you look at the Yasuo build, three Doran swords coming out. He's going for that health sustain. That's going to delay the build a little bit. Two Doran swords over there could have already become the cloak, uh, Jilty Cloak that he needed for the extra crit. But that being said, the one thing I want to focus now is actually on the Rise. Rise finished his ro his Rod of Ages at the 14 minute mark. Oh, thanks to whatever happened. And and look damage. at the damage he's building onto the Ziggs right now. Okay, they you don't mess with the rise. It's already 16 minutes of the game. He has a rod of ages and a tier. If you, if everyone remembers correctly, he bought tier as a first item at six minutes, which means that the entire exchange at Bali was what allowed him to buy a tier. Uh, sorry, a buy a rod of the ages, and that is going to propel him to be a very menacing and annoying champion to do with in the mid game. Mm -hmm. Ryzen Hiruman, yeah, you take away my Oriana, you take away my Victor, but Rise, and that is gonna be the teleport on towards Rift Tettle. They do have vision there, and it might be stolen from the looks of it. One hit does still have the smite, and they get it. That is a force flash by XE7 Eternal, and it's gonna be another team fight in the Baron Pit. The ultimate that is Sasagi, last breath is gonna land, and another fear beyond death. Oh, he just needs to be very, very low, and Nautilus is gonna go down and. Yo, what is that? Kled finally making his way there. The team is already dead. That is currently a triple kill. A 2 for 4 exchange. Streza, you were a little bit too late. Your teammates are dead. What you gonna do? And they they did not manage to get the Herald as well. The flash from Zack was definitely not cash money. No smart. I... Ah, yeah, yeah. A lot of that things That flash happened. was definitely questionable because there was no... You had no business in flashing back in. The team might have decided to engage, but I just don't think that was a good idea. Yasuo was already nearby. They did have vision of Yasuo, and the alt and the combo within the Baron pit meant that they have no escape. 
Yeah, so and I was just so sad to see. Everybody got, you know, good kills, good assists from that team fight. Or God is just gonna become a bigger beast now. He is seven kills. He is gonna go for the. Uh, let me just hover over it. Yeah, Aegis of Legion. So that's gonna make him a little bit more tankier. And everybody got kills. Everybody got assists. Gonna reset. Prep for the next. You know, Dragon. Dragon is gonna be up very very soon. And we're definitely gonna be a not seeing another fight. You'd love to see As it. Both teams are going to prepare for the dragon spawn right now. So far, we so far, Sifia has managed to secure two dragons, and right now it's going to be the fire dragon. Fire dragon, not something you want to give to Phantasm, especially considering how the last two team fights have gone. If they've already doing this good during a team fight, you don't you don't really want to give them a fire dragon to give to to let them kill your team even faster. Uh huh. And dragon is gonna be spotting up pretty soon. Their Phantasm is trying to clear out wards, get vision on their side. All of them does have teleport, so like. If a fight does break out, it'll, it'll be fine. They're, they're, they're gonna be okay. But the thing is, they have to preemptively teleport. They cannot teleport as a reactionary move. Oh, and look there at this we go. Zach. It's actually getting caught right now. They do want to get the Zack, but all of them is on the other side. And that is gonna be a teleport for Rom. The Urgot. Urgot is in the middle of everyone. And Minion Slayer, the Echo, is gonna be the first one inside. And that is show software landing. And that, yeah, that Cyclone is gonna land to a lot of people. And fear from... Death, whatever fear it's called. Death. Fear beyond death. He is gonna get one. That is gonna be a double kill. Nautilus very, very low. That is gonna be an uncontested bear dragon. Zero for two at the cost of a teleport from the Urgot. Pretty cash money. Exactly. Everybody from Team Phantasm, they are just so, so low, but they don't have enough damage to do it. You know, Phantasm, they we're all sticked up, grouped up as five members, and the members from Sifia were thinking about flanking them, but you can't really flank them if they are the ones who are ahead right now. Uh -huh. And all these combat sets are just not working out for uh, Sifia. Uh, and not just that, I just feel like they have been like, they were split so much right now. And that was two teleports from the Kled and Echo on, you know, near the pink ward at uh, Baron. And now there he is going to be meeting up with the Echo, but Ryzen Hiroman alone, 1v3, but the rest of his teammates is near him. And will we see another skirmish? Like, both of them very, very low half HP. And fan one hit is just gonna, you know, maybe there's someone who's gonna clear out vision and regain control of their jungle. That w I feel like those two teleports from Echo and the Kled was a little bit too much. Too overzealous, yeah, definitely. I would agree with you because I don't think Ryzen would be the last champion that you want to catch alone. Maybe a Wukong, maybe Set, maybe Yasuo if you could, but Ryze is not such a good idea. If you because look at the look at the stats from um Nautilus right now, you know, he doesn't really have any MR save for that null magic mantle that he has. And if you decide to go all in against a Ryze with even two members. If your members don't have the damage to kill the Rise in time, Rise actually has both um, Seraph and Brace and... Sorry, no, he still has the Archangel, so it's not yet upgraded. But he has the Rod of Ages as well, which means he is going to be quite tanky, right? So, and especially without the uh, tank training capabilities, you oh, are not going to do gonna well. And that's a fell bomb from the Zig Card that forced to burn Flash. Yep, that is a beautiful... I mean, I, that was pretty catch The ultimate from Wukong will not take that long of a, of a cooldown compared to a flash. So, like, in case a fight does happen, he can just try to go back in that... Ooh, that is a lot of damage from the Echo. The Lich Bane just crocking so much. And an ultimate from the Clem. Not sure why he's trying to go very aggressive. Speaking of magic resist, Clem does not have any. And he is taking a lot of damage. Rice notices it. And you know what, yo. You're gonna die. Come, come, come at me even more. I'm gonna stun you. I'm gonna kill you. Overload... And what I say he did? Ooh, I mean, that was another flash. Actually, because Zack was actually coming to top lane to try and flank them. But what actually get, uh, ended up being happening was that Zack was actually stopped midway. There was a challenger in the way, and that stopped Zack from being able to jump in for a gank on, against the Rise. And that basically is what went wrong for. Uh, for Streza at top lane there, you know, there's not much he could do. They had a communication, they decided to gank top lane, and then instead, Didn't 7 work. Eternal, he found a challenger on the way there, mm -hmm. and basically that killed his teammate. Yep, and right now, Rice is gonna switch against 
the Yasuo. You know, I, the Yasuo can't really handle the Echo as of right now. And he's just going to try and go for it. And that is going to be a two versus one. The Yasuo forcing to use his ultimate. But Ryze, do you want to go aggressive? Nope. Realm Warp is not up yet. If it was up, I, I, for sure, you would have seen a probably dead Echo. Probably. Yep, the Chrono Break being burned from the Echo right there, that's going to be an advantage. They know that if they catch Echo the next time, they are going to kill him really, really easily. As you can see, Urgot's going for a split push at top lane. There's no one who can really handle the Urgot right now. He's actually 902. Death Dance and, uh, and Black Cleaver already completed. It's going to nullify a lot of the armor stats that, um, that basically Sifia has been buying, you know? The two Ninja Tabbies from the Kled the, and the um, uh, Zac. It's mm -hmm. just not going to work out really well. Yep, Zack is going to go for the Thorn Males, but at the, at this point, you know, dealing with the Urgot, is, it is definitely going to be a bit tough. Granted, yeah, three of, like four of them are at least AD, but if you're so focused on being, uh, on building armor, you don't have enough to, you know, deal with the Rise. Rise has been very prevalent during team fights, and Zack is only building AD, I mean armor. So, Exactly. He's gonna get shredded. And actually, speaking about building resistances, right? Look at the build from uh, the entirety of Team Phantasm. They're actually having a field day with item builds because Clud is actually not posing a threat to any of them, and so all, practically the entire team has spec for magic resist. And this means that the damage from Echo, from Zack, from Ziggs, and Nautilus is just basically going to be reduced and practically ineffective. Exactly. I mean, more than anything, the only target they can go for is just, you know, Yasuo. Yasuo being very squishy. But the thing is, Yasuo does not need that. He just needs to press R, just needs to fight. And that is probably Busty Crusher getting caught again by the Rise. Taken down to, like, what, 40? That's basically 50, almost 60%. half health. Yeah. That was uh, very bad. He might have to go back and reset here. But the thing is, Dragon is already up. Orgot is pushing top lane. He does have teleport. Rise is pushing mid lane. It is a beautiful... Uh, a good coordination between them and Kled teleport is gonna be up soon, so they can try to force Dragon, but no, Ryzen Hiruman is just gonna be pushing down the mid lane. Nobody is trying to deal with him. Zach and Echo still in the bot lane, They're trying to figure they something out. They do not have vision of Dragon right now, so they have to go this on instinct. It's gonna be a blind attempt by Seven Eternal, and he almost gets to oh. the Dragon fight, but it's not gonna work out. A lot of people really low right now on Team Phantasm, as everyone's gonna burn Flash to escape. Nala's gonna be the first person to die. As we see here, going golden, Echo is forced to use his Chrono Break to return. And Ziggs is slowly trying to just get a few bombs out and slowly kite them backwards. But nothing's going well right now. Yo, or not. They're getting ready. His elastic thing shot by deciding not to. No one's dead except for Busty Crusher on the Nautilus. Both teams decide to back out. Yo, that Urgot was just standing in the middle of everything. Yo, you can't kill me. <laughs> just taking a lot of damage there. And no one just is able to deal with it. And Nautilus well, again. You, have, you can't really blame him now, Uh-huh, okay, there we go again. Asserting dominance. Echo did try to steal it with Hextech Proto Belt, but no, he is going to be forced to run away. Like, you know I ain't going to deal with this. Urgot is pretty big. Raz is going to push up the top lane, and Zebrant out 10 kills on the Urgot. Just needs to reset, go back, and, you know, he'll be pretty much good for the next team fight. 700 gold bounty too on his head. Whew. Exactly, and the pressure is up for for Sevilla right now. You know, they oh. can't, if they this game, they will be out of the tournament. So uh -huh. they are trying their best to see what they can salvage from the situation. But team fights have been going really long. Busty Crusher once again being found alone, and, and that is going to be last to break. break. But it looks like it's going to be a two versus three, and that is not the still alive. No, he is going to be dead. And Echo trying to go for the aggressive push. And he teleported back to bot lane, and that is currently a 3 versus 3, and so far so good. Rise back in the rescue, and 7 Eternal probably gonna be the next one going down. Oh no, he did manage to get Paru, and Deer 6 is gonna go gold. Will it be enough though? It is gonna be enough, and Ryzen Hiruman 1 versus 2, Deer 6. Can you do any more damage? He does not have mana, Ryzen Hiruman. He is gonna teleport Realm Warp, and that is gonna be a shutdown. A 3 4 4 in the bot lane, and yo, that was. I don't know if that was a misclick from Minion Slayer on that Echo with the Chrono Break over there. Yep. Because he clicked Chrono Chrono Break when he was pretty much at full HP. And yep. he teleported himself all the way back to bot lane where he was actually chased away by the Urgot. Yeah. As well. This might be nerves. 
I don't want to say this is nurse, but this is a very unfortunate situation, actually. Yeah, I just think it's like, uh... He thought he was gonna get one to zero, 100 to 0 very quickly, but no, it just turns out, okay. Still alive, and he teleported himself back in the bot lane, so... A bit counterintuitive, and you know, Urgot, just doing Urgot things, no one can be able to deal with him. And that rise, he just came in there, right on time, and currently it's gonna be a 1 versus 3. Three man push in the top lane, from the looks of it, Rise is most definitely gonna be dead. Realm Warp is on cooldown, everything else is on cooldown, and that is gonna be a shutdown for the Kled. Rise being just a little bit too overconfident there, getting caught with a three man gang. I think that's the first successful three man gang that they finally had on him all game. And I. And yeah, it looks like they're setting up for Baron right now. Yep, yeah, from the looks of it, they are. They do have good vision control on the Baron pit, but not so good on towards uh, Phantasm's uh, blue side jungle. They are gonna start Baron though, and nobody from Phantasm does have any vision or do they or know like where it's coming from. Teleports are not up. From the looks of it, they might just, you know, get the sneaky sneaky on this. And they're finally fine realizing that um, Sifia is actually doing the Baron, but by the time they arrive, it's a little bit too late. They are going in to try and deny as many people from the Baron buff though, as we're going to see Fear Beyond oh, that, that already is getting very, Oh, very beautiful. That ultimate is just going to fear a lot of people and all of them very, very low. Paru, the only one left remaining as well as the Maranta, but Ryzen Hiruman is not even there yet. That was essentially a th like what a 5v4, Deer 6 very very low, but hey, hello Ryze is here. What you're trying to do, he's gonna jump out of there, but will it be enough? Yep, he is gonna go back off, unless... Oh, he makes you it know out of there alive. So unfortunate, Z Maranta actually had the corrosive charge ready on, um, sorry, on that Urka right there, and if he decided to just throw a blind cube, and he could have actually uh, denied one more Baron buff. That was like what, a 2 for 3 in a 4v5 situation. And yes, that was a very good fear beyond that. Going in after the uh, after knowing that he's going to kill somebody, getting a 5-man fear, which basically stopped Team Sifia from actually doing any damage for a good 2 seconds. Uh-huh, and I think if the rides were to... If he had teleport, they probably would have wiped the floor on that Baron pit. Not gonna lie. Oh, here we go, Minion Slayer. If he... Oh, he did not get rooted during team, that team fight. And Dragon is gonna be up soon. And Urgot does have teleport in case it, the fight does break out. But one hit is forced. He is gonna get zoned out. But Streza as well. A bit tankier up in the top lane. He probably can't deal with it. But one hit trying to go for the steal. But no, he is gonna You're go for the fight. We're getting a lot of damage onto the Wukong. Wukong is dead right now. If they get Dragon Soul in, it's only their fault. Wuk Urgot has already teleported and he's actually zoning out three people right now. It's gonna be 3v1 as look at this Urgot. The death dance is preventing him from dying. Mal of Memorius as well. He's gonna take down. Oh um, my Zachary goodness. Is, he is actually not dying yet. Death dance is just really doing so much. And now the other two members are forced to run. The bot lane duo running Woo! away as we can see. Echo has actually finally taken care of that rise. Things yep. of team fight finally going well-ish. Well-ish for XPI. Yeah, that was a 3-4-2-2. So that was a good exchange, I feel, and like a lot of shutdowns get being gotten, but then Zim Rantau, he does not have as much MR, but yo, Minion Slayer is taking quite a bit of damage there. They have a lot of pings there coming in, they want to get the top lane turret, nobody has been able to deal with the Urgot. Yo, so... Yeah, my goodness, the Urgot is just and so just big. just look at that, Urgot was, lit was literally doing a 1v3, handling, um, handling the... Zach with this handling Zach, handling Ziggs, handling Nautilus. He is level 17. That's not easy to deal with. 13, 0, and 2. And he's like, you know what? I'm not gonna die. And now he has spirit to such bot. He's not only gonna have a lot of magic resist as he deals with them. You know, this is the worst case scenario for Sifia in that 3v1 state, right? You have mm -hmm. you have three AP care three AP damage champions, magic damage champions, trying to get rid of uh, basically, a one Urgot, one Urgot. Built, <laughs> and one Urgot who built Death Dance, Maw of Marmorius, right? He, if he's not, if he's about to die, that Maw of Marmorius, the shield's gonna save him from magic damage, and then he's gonna slowly heal up from all the physical damage he's been dealing with that Death Dance. This is just terrible. As we're gonna see a collapse into top lane, actually. Let's let's pan into top lane. Here we go, that is gonna be another fight. Top lane, that is gonna be the fight that we want to see. And that is a beautiful last breath from Yasuo. He does get all three of them. Bussy Crusher and Gear 6 
is gonna be the first one to die. That is a four versus four versus four. Stress that go and go. Not gonna be enough. He is gonna get unmounted and a double kill for Yasuo. No, a double kill for the Rise and a couple of more kills for the rest of his teammates. Yo, that was uh, cash money for them. And yo, Echo was not there in the fight. Cannot manage to teleport dealing with the Urgot alone. That was cash money. They get another turret. They want to go for the push up in the top lane. Urgot still pushing down the bot lane. No one can deal with him. He is like very huge this game. And the flash from Paru. He wants to get him. And he is rooted. Minion Slayer goes gold. And Seven Eternal tries to look for an opportunity there. But no, not going to be enough. Minion Slayer being zoned out. But the rest of Xvia is going to be spawning up soon. While Urgot is pushing down the bot lane casually. And you know what, guys? We should probably reset. We got a good, good kill there. Reset by stuff. Fight again. That was such a beautiful flank from Phantasm. Just catching everybody out. You know, it doesn't matter how far away your teammates are. Yasuo can catch up with the last breath as long as anybody's knocked out. That was just so ridiculous. Wukong going in, not even having to burn flash for that engage. Yo, Wukong. I'm, I'm not sure what's happening on Sifia's side, but look at the ward coverage actually from... Um, from Phantasm and basically there was no way that Sifia would have known that ganks were coming Yep, definitely all of them were so fixated on trying to get top lane I think they were aiming for the rise before like everything started But then lo, lo and behold everybody else came in and here, here we go and probably another early fight in the mid lane and that is gonna be Wukong knocking everyone up, but Yasuo a little bit too far away. Ryzen Human One is gonna be the first one to go down. Yasuo trying to deal with the rest of the team. Last breath is gonna land out of Minister. He's gonna go back, Chrono Shift back away, and will that be Urgot trying to carry the team? One hit, Yasuo is gonna go down. Strenza looks like it might be a win for Xpia, but so far Urgot is still alive. Raid Boss trying to heal up everything. He is taking a lot of damage. That took five people. At the very least, to try and kill him. And that is an ace for extra. They might want to try and get better. Reset and this. That was just a beautiful force fight coming in from Busty Crusher. With the Nautilus just doing tons of damage early on. Just trying to soak up everything. And everyone else, Ryzen Hiruman, first one to die. Strezza's just keeping him off the back. And will this be a final push up towards mid lane? Yo, this is very, very unfortunate for... For Phantasm, really, they could have won that team fight. Everyone was a little bit too split up. But the decision making from Xfia won them the game. And yo, that could have been anyone's game. And this is Xfia. The curse has not been broken. Xfia will be fighting up against whoever is going to be the loser for tomorrow's match between Bamos and Team Sigma. Again, this set up the three of the that that team, three of the teams again, top three once more. Yo, I'm very hyped to see how it's gonna go tomorrow man Woo! that was just so unfortunate for phantasm too they actually coordinated that mid lane play pretty well but i think what happened was that yasuo was just a little bit too far out of range to go in for the cyclone and by the time he was every, the knock the knockout was already expired and he couldn't go in so he, he took the cycle he took his he took his like uh, last breath on whoever he could the moment he could click it and i think it went on to the rock target I will give props to Urgot. He actually kept everyone busy for f he kept four for people <laughs> busy for the entirety of that fight. But the problem was that, you know, Urgot could keep uh, three people busy. But I think, it, I believe Echo was actually on the back line just taking care of anyone else. Mm -hmm. Echo and was for, dealing with exactly. the Yasuo. Like, a heads yeah, down. Yeah, Echo was dealing with Yasuo. And Yasuo actually somewhat killed himself because his last breath did not go onto the Echo. And that gave Echo a lot of time to say, all right, I'm going to no, no, use no. the time that you're busy channeling your skills to try and kill you. No, it and did land on the Echo, but Echo just rewind time, back full HP, just like, you know, deal with the Yasuo No, he, he definitely used last breath on somebody. I saw it earlier. Yeah, That's, it was on the Echo. Yeah. I can confirm. Was it? It was. Oh, okay. So it was really good. And it was just that last bit that was unfortunate, right? So Urgot did his job, which was he kept the whole team busy. But his team was practically dead because that was actually really good ultimate from Ziggs as well. Not being able to be blocked by the uh, by anything, really. And as everyone was full engaging, Ziggs took the opportunity through Mega Inferno Bomb and everyone was about half HP. The, in, the ideal scenario for Echo to come in flank and pick up those kills. So yeah, um, a little bit unfortunate for Phantasm, but I would say a good turnaround for Sephia. Uh-huh, and especially during that team fight, the Kled was all the way up in 
like Ryzen Space, Yasuo Space, so it was definitely a little bit hard for them to try and deal with them. He did, your know, Clet is just building full on damage. So it, he does have a Guardian Angel, so even if you kill him, he's just gonna go back up, be alive again, and you know, you, know, you ain't gonna do anything to me. We're gonna kill you again. And, whew, that was pretty big. That was a good game. Good fight to end tonight's games. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed. We are we sincerely apologize for the delay. And hope you guys tune in again for tomorrow's uh, third place fight between Xfia and who, who knows who, who will be. We will be posting the pre-recorded match hopefully by tomorrow afternoon before before or earlier after Sunkai. Inshallah. But yeah, before we go off, we'd like to thank take this time to thank our sponsors, The Box, Juan Watera, Sachira Cafe, and Hatte College. Also, not to forget to thank the main sponsor for this evening, Esports Association Brunei. And this is Commentator Z. Cool. This is Coco. Okay, no? Not gonna and I'm over here. I'm here too. <laughs> All right, and we're going to be signing off and hope to see you guys again tomorrow. And good night. Thank you.